Well, our ideas of what a relationship may look like are changing, but the law isn't necessarily catching up. A 2019 study published in the Journal of Sex Research found about 4% of Canadians were in a polyamorous relationship, meaning they had more than one intimate partner. With us this morning to talk about how the legal system needs to evolve with modern relationships is John Paul Boyd, a family law mediator and arbit uh, arbitrator in Calgary. John Paul, great to have you on the show. Good morning. So to be clear to our audience, we're not talking about polygamy, which is a marriage between more than two people. That is illegal in Canada. We're talking about consensual relationships involving more than two people. So John Paul, how do you feel the lack of general understanding surrounding polyamory is leading to our institutions falling behind in how they accommodate it? Well, part of the problem is that the entire legal structure we have in Canada is built on this implicit and only at a few times explicit, explicit assumption that relationships only come in pairs. So the problem is, is that as a matter of law, there's nothing illegal or contrary to the law about being in a relationship with as many people as you please. The problem is that the, the, the institutional structures that underpin basic rules about society, such as family law legislation, legislation on divorce, um, the rules about CPP and employment insurance are all predicated on this assumption that families only come in two. So as a result, some people are in situations where when they're dealing with their private health and dental insurer, they have to decide which of, the, of their spouses they're going to nominate as their beneficiary. Yeah, as soon as you start breaking it down, you start to see all the ways that when you fill out forms, there's partner one and there's partner two, and then that's it. Yeah. You, you've you studied this. A study you conducted in 2017 found that nearly two-thirds of polyamorous relationships involve three adults. But polyamory, it can be much more than that. It can involve more people and more complex dynamics. Where is the law still falling behind when it comes to treating polyamorous relationships as equal to two partner relationships. You mentioned the dental and healthcare. Where else are we seeing that challenge? Well, um, I, I do family law, and so I have a bit of a bias in that direction. So I'd have to say it has to do with that. Um, in Canada, the law about children, for example, is at a place where in most provinces, children can have as many guardians as they want. And of course, it's guardians who get to make decisions about schooling and give permission for field trips and medical procedures and things like that. Um, but uh, when it comes to uh, other aspects of family law, such as an entitlement to spousal support or partner support or the division of assets, the law is still very much locked in a binary situation. So, for example, in, in British Columbia, um, the way they've defined the term spouse, you can actually have as many spouses as you wish. Of course, only one of your spouses you can be married to. Um, but the way the law works is when it talks about the division of property, for example, it says each spouse shall have one half of the particular asset. And so you can see how there's this kind of implicit assumption about how relationships work that's built into the very fabric of the law itself. And that, that can be a problem. The good news, I think, is that people in polyamorous relationships who are intending on living together for a long time, they can easily, you know, head that problem off at the pass by signing an agreement about how their relationship is going to work and how they're going to solve problems in the event that it stops working. Yeah, but I appreciate for a couple that is just a couple, it's two people, they don't have to do that extra legwork. You have to know if you're in a polyamorous relationship to do that legwork ahead of time that doesn't exist for a partnership that's just two people. If John Paul, if we can, I want to go back to the way that this impacts relationships where there are children involved. What other factors need to be thought of for relationships that are polyamorous? Well, the good news is that when it comes to children and parenting, um, the law is actually hmm, uh, pretty evolved. Um, the court's only mandate uh, when it's making orders about children is to make orders that are in the best interests of those children. And there's nothing in any of the legislation across Canada that says that, for example, being in a polyamorous relationship is one of the things that has to be considered. Um, in fact, I'm aware of a case in British Columbia, probably around 2012, um, in which case um, a, a, a custody dispute erupted following the separation of one member of a polyamorous family. And uh, the judge refused to take the, the, the nature of the family into account as some sort of you know, mitigating factor. Okay. Well, John Paul, I appreciate your insight on this. Thank you for coming on the show this morning. Thanks very much, Kelsey. Hey, thanks for watching. If you liked this, be sure to subscribe here or you can check out more Your Morning videos right here.